I remember uh, we went to a battle rap concert. It was like we were in the club, the Dallas club circuit or something. And they had a battle rap. Boom, ate up everybody. Everything. Easy. And somebody called him fat. I was like, uh, you can't, you can't roast him. He's gonna kill you. Yeah, he got a baby. He, uh, he doing good. He's still in the sneakers. I'm still saying. Uh, sneakers. Sneakers. Kid. He got bigger. He did get bigger. He, yeah. I told him, I said, I love you, but you gotta do something about it. You got a kid. So hopefully he do that. He scared me with the weight. Like he big as hell. Uh, like he passed big. Uh, but it's all here though. It's nothing like his waist is normal. But it's still the same, boom. I remember he went to your house. He came back like, cuz, I went to call the house. It was like Bel Air. <laughs> he was like, cuz. <laughs> He's like, that shit changed my life, cuz. <laughs> no, he came back from me. He was just like, I, I, was like, I swear to good, cuz. He's like, he had this shit I never seen before. Cause we ain't never seen it. Like, yo, his brother had sneakers. His own sneakers. <laughs> I'm like, nah, this is before. If this was Instagram or Snapchat, he might have FaceTime. Nah, thanks. This shit was crazy. But he was, nah, he, for the whole day, he, he was just so like, you ain't gonna believe this shit, cuz. That's when we went to, uh, we went to South Padre. Bro, he lost his mind, bro. Oh my God. You ready? Yeah. Right. Oh shit, we lied, that's cool. Let's go start out there. What episode is this on? Uh, episode seven. You ready? Shit, we lied, that's cool. Let's go start out there. What episode is this on? Uh, okay. Seven. All right, this is my episode. Is this for D? Four. First episode one. <laughs> Shit. Because D, D was in D was in a cult. You gotta remember this. D, D was back. in a cult. D back. He he joined the cult. Did you have glasses before the cult? I don't think you did. <laughs> and now D, and, and he, he can now earring. see clear. He got a new. D, is that two <laughs> chains? No man, no chains. These are new glasses because I did lose he my He came back with new shoes. We don't even know who this is. Dude, what is oh, are you a clone? It's not talking about. Me. <laughs> He like the fake Gucci man clone. That's not D. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we got a special podcast. Yourself, episode, <laughs> episode what? Episode seven. Episode seven. He been watching. <laughs> episode seven. This this is a very important episode for us. Uh, my guys, this that's D. That's Josh. Me, Crook. I got Garland Green. Let me give him Green. H Town representative. TCU grad. NBA. Overseas, dunking on people in the big three. Book writer. A father, a brother, uh, a Christian, a great dude. This man, Garland Green, everybody. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate man, it. I appreciate you. We go back since TCU. Yeah, I met you yeah. with Greg Hill. Shouts out to you, fellow Gary, Indiana. I met you uh, at the dorms, man, at TCU. I went to a game, and uh, I was like, yo, who is this dude? This is when you had to fade. And you was in warm up doing some crazy stuff. I mean, he doing all I'm like, yo, who is that? And Greg, you know, he retarded. He like, oh, that's Gerald Green, brother. I said, Gerald Green? He said, yeah, that, he got That's it. all I seen. I, I was like, okay, let me see what, let me see what he looking that's like. That's my dog. And then Greg, all I see, Greg, even Greg, like Greg, that's my yeah. dog. He used to hype me up. He's like, let me see some G. G, Bruh. let me see some. Like, all right, you know, I'll show you some OG. Yeah. And, and then, Greg was the OG. And so. then what's crazy, after Greg graduated, I still went to all your games until you left. Until yeah. you, I went to all your games. I watched you progress. But what I like about it, you were so humble. You were so hungry. And you were solid. You know what I'm saying? Most people you meet that's in that spotlight can be jerks, but. I appreciate you for being solid. Even doing this with me, I appreciate and you. You say, oh, you, say you was like that, but you still like that. Mm -hmm. And you don't see that a lot when people. True. Yeah, mm -hmm. they get that big head and they just want to act stupid. Mm -hmm. But you is like, the fact you even took this, oh, it was like. And D Boom. He was telling me, I was like, that's big. D Boom, we got him. D Boom, when he yes, see this, he going to be like, oh, swear to good. Yes, we got we got to type my cousin, my blood cousin, D Boom. You're going to see this. Man, you took my cousin out, treated him like family, man. I think. I just, this is what he said verbatim. I'll kill a nigga for him. That's what he said verbatim. <laughs> the board, I'm, just, I'm sorry, but uh, I appreciate dog. you, man. But we want to do a podcast for you to give your flowers and your roses because you know what I'm saying? Like, you you had a journey. you still on a journey. you grinding. you hooping. You're doing the right thing. You give it back to the community. And I want people to, you know, uh, to know about you because not just I know about you, but I feel like you should be league tag. I feel like you should be right there. I should be talking about you in the playoffs and finals. Like, yeah, Garland did this. So tell people about before college, your your, your beginning, your journey, H-Town, and what drove you to hoop. And then when did you know, like, right, I'm kind of nice. I could probably get a scholarship. Like, when you know, like, all right, this is, this is a little too easy for me. 
Yeah, man. <clears throat> I think to be honest, uh, for me, I started. I started kind of realizing, you know, I wanted to hoop when I seen my brother kind of taking off. I was, you know, the younger brother. You know, I used to play with him like outside, and you know, be hooping with him outside and stuff like that. And I didn't really think nothing of it. I just always thought we was just kids, and we just like basketball, and we were just like anybody in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? But when he kind of like took off with it and was like really good, he was already really good to us, you know, oh. everybody in the neighborhood. But like we were just like, you know, it was normal. But he kind of, you know, started playing other schools, started playing everybody in the city, and he just kind of came to his own household name and then took it even farther the next year and like really progressed. Like he progressed in like two years. Two years before he was like the number one player in the nation, his high school year. Two years before that, he was cut from JV. Wow, I didn't know that. So he made like Georgia. such an he did the Georgia stuff. Yeah, like it's weird. Like I, I know some people. Like some people be like, oh, you know, Garland's story, Gerald's story. They tie in. They do tie in because like everything he's done, I've kind of done in that way, mm -hmm. following my own story in my own way. But it was kind of because of him. Mm -hmm. Like when we were kids, he'll be outside playing. I was right there. You know, he come out. He come back inside, and he we're playing. I was right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, We've always had that relationship, you know what I'm saying? So, but as we got older, obviously we did our own things. We have our own lives, you know, I'm married with kids, you know, he's married with kids, you know, but uh, just as we got older, you know, as, you know, as I seen him, you know, as a kid, I seen him just blowing up, you know, just doing good things. And I was just like, man, I want to do, I, you know, I want to hoop too. Yeah, so yeah. I think I got something, you know yeah. what I mean? And shoot, he can do what I can do. Yeah. So I was just like, that's what really kind of drove me at first. And uh, I really thought it then. I just seen maybe probably too much. It mm. probably hurt me a little bit because mm. maybe, you know, I maybe thought you know, I was entitled or mm. something to do it. But as, you know, I got kind of knocked over my feet, mm. you know, a few years, you know, even, you know, as a pro a little bit, um, it helped me, you know, kind of look myself in the mirror and mm. overcome some things and uh, just kind of stick with it. And here I am today. Man, shout out to that. And then also, like, so you, and then when was the moment like you on the court, like, you know, you in high school, that you like, it's a little too easy. When did you, was it AAU or was it, what year where you noticed like, I can get a bucket, you can't stop me. And I, I know Man, I can do something. Honestly, it was when I was a kid. Damn. Yeah. Like this was even before I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. I was always really good. Mm -hmm. Cause I was playing my brother and his playing friends. Up. Yeah, bro, I was always playing yeah. up. Yeah, so <laughs> and I was yeah. tall. Yeah. So I was the same. The only person I wasn't taller than was my brother. Mm -hmm. But everybody else, I was taller than. So me and my brother, are the two tallest kids in the park. Abusing them. But I'm the youngest kid yeah. in the park. Oh, the young. Imagine that. Yeah. I'm the second tallest kid in the park, but the youngest tallest mm -hmm. kid. If that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. so but I so at a young age, I'm developing skills, you know, playing, and that kind of helped me, um, you know. But you know, I had to go through some things too. Like even at TCU, like I had to go through some things to kind of get better. Each level is different, you know. You go from AU, you go from AU to you know college or AU high school, you know depending on where you are, then from there you go to college, and then the levels get different, you know. Even from college to pros, it is not the same. You know, college, a lot of college guys think, you know, going overseas is sweet. Nah, uh -uh. nah, get your ass spit out. <laughs> is it, you know, there's a lot of NBA guys go to Europe and they're done in a few months. Because it's just, it's not, it's a different game and guys go into things with a different mentality, with that entitlement, and it's that's not just that. not it. Not that. Yeah. And then, so let's talk about at TCU where I met you. I met you at TCU, your freshman. Let's talk about the recruitment. Was it an easy thing, hard, annoying? Was it like, how was recruitment? Or you kind of knew, like, all right, I'm going to be here because now you got recruitments. It's spectacles. It's like it's like a, a relationship with you, like, you know. Yeah. But and I feel like in your era, it was more like, I'm going here. It's my decision. Keep it moving. Man, really – I knew I was gonna come here. My brother played for the Mavericks. Oh, so it was marriage. It was like I was okay. You gonna play for the Mavericks? I'm gonna come. I'm gonna train. I'm gonna train with y'all, and I'm gonna train here. It's crazy though. As soon as I, as soon as I did a letter of intent to sign at TCU, he got traded to the Rockets. To the Rockets down the street though. <laughs> down, down the street. Down the street. Down so the street. I was like, dang. Yeah. So I was really using that because I was gonna use it as a training. Tool. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna train, you know, with TCU and then try to train with the Rockets. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna train with the Mavericks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, just show face. Yeah. Who knows where that yeah. could have blossomed. You know what when I mean? When it's my time, look at me. Look yeah, at me. Up, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that didn't transpire. You know what I mean? So, but uh, 
I still stuck it out with TCU, and I man, I enjoyed my time at TCU, man. I, it was a great school, great education I got, and um, and I'm happy and thankful for those four years, man. And you develop. I remember seeing you first. You was like just getting like little dunks and stuff. Each year you would add something to your game. When I first seen you, they had you in like the slasher role. You was just yeah. rim running. Then next year you had a jump shot. Then third, fourth year you putting the thing on the floor. Like I'm just like yo, you add every year you add it to your bag, and I just was. It was dope to see you add to your bag. Some people go to school like, all right, I'm 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 this dude. They don't add to their bag because you could be the best person in high school, but if you don't add to your bag of what the team is needed. And Coach Jamie, uh, who did you, you had no, you had to. I don't even know his name. Uh, he left. I forget the coach's name. But Trent I, Johnson? The, no, the other one. The, uh, he, Jim the, Christian? Uh, the white guy. Jim Christian. Yes. Yep. He had. He was different. Uh, I, we could talk off air. You know, I, I knew personal things because I knew people on the team. But, mm-hmm. man, can you talk about the mental grind of coming from high school to college and being prepared for what you're going through mentally? Because what people don't really realize that it's a lot of stuff off the record that they don't talk about that y'all go through. It's demanding. From high school to college. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I, I know things of how they tell y'all what it is. Like, it's like, yo, your role is this. You ain't going to do that. So how did you mentally lock in? Like, all right, this ain't sweet. Take what they say with a grain of salt. Work on my game. Because I've seen people that y'all had transfer because they couldn't handle the, the tough, you know, demanding thing of coach staff. I'm not going to lie. I kind of wanted to. <laughs> I honestly did. But my dad, I was talking to my dad, and my dad was like, nah, man, don't transfer. Oh, I'm moving the camera. Camera, well, you good? The camera. You My dad good. was just like, "Don't transfer, you know, stick it out." Mm-hmm. And I just, just kind of like listening to his advice. Mm-hmm. He was like, "Man, you got a good school. You're gonna get a good education, and that's really what you you did this for." Mm-hmm. And, you know, at the end of the day, everybody ain't gonna be pros. Blah blah. blah. And he was like, "And if you want to still be a pro, you can still be a pro after you get your education." Facts. And my Master dad, Chico. my dad kind of wanted me to kind of like he was always pushing me to get education because my brother, you know, he went straight from high school. Yeah. But my yeah. dad, you know, just being a father, yeah. was like, I get it. I put my son in the NBA, and he was happy that he helped, you know, get my brother there. But he was like, I want to help you get education. Like, yeah, like, so, so yeah. he was real. He was real focused on me about that, which you know, I, I'm thankful. I'm thankful mm-hmm. for because at the end of the day, he's right. You know, it helped me develop in different ways. You know, you know, some people always be like, oh, you know, you didn't make it a league, bro. Life is about perspective. Here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And for me, yes, I do live a different life traveling, seeing the world, I'm never home, but, you know, my perspective on it is, man, I'm living a great life, and I'm thankful, thankful to God, you know, I'm here and breathing, and things are being taken care of, you know. So. The family straight for playing the game you love, and you got the education as your backbone when it's all said and done, so that's yeah. the Chico, you play the game you love, got a free education, traveling the world, all for the end, and, you know, your kids are season, so. Exactly. That's dope to me. And then let's let's uh bunch from there. So you got you go for TCU the four years there, y'all did good work, made the tournament, uh, watched every game y'all was at. I stopped watching TCU when y'all left. Because I was so attached to that team, you Hank, Tuffy. <laughs> I knew the whole team. I stopped going to games after that. Uh, but then I started going back. Uh, this kid named RJ Nemhard got drafted. I'm, I was uh worked with his father for the AU, so went back. But fast forward to that, draft happens, you don't get a call, you know, you don't give up, you don't get discouraged, you get a taste of the league, go overseas. How was that transition from America to a different time zone, different food, different culture, different music, different everything? Like, how did you prepare with that? And you married with kids, so they got to come with you and adapt to that. I know about that. What's the DR? The electrical socket is different. You can't even plug in your phone. I was like, yo, my iPhone don't even work. You had to buy a converted DR from my phone. So, you know how that is. That's facts. Right, man, all that. I had to adapt. Well, I kind of got a little taste. Mm-hmm. So my junior year, man, I went on this little, uh, man, shout out to Reach USA. I don't know if you guys are watching, but um, these, this, uh, like a ministry mm-hmm. took a group of college guys to play basketball in China. Mm-hmm. We just did like some ministry work. And back. But this was in uh, college. Mm-hmm. It was called Reach USA. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got a chance to see something, you know, outside then. But mm-hmm. this was at TCU. And so, but even, you know, just like what you said, though, after when I got, to the pros, it was just like, bro, it was hard, especially for me. Because my first year was out, it was not, it was not sweet. It was kind of tough. You know, I wasn't making nowhere near the type of money I wanted to make. Really, I couldn't even support myself. Damn. I was just out there, and they were supporting me. And I was just, hey, you know, had pretty damn food. And I had a wife and kids. So it was a struggle. That's a, another thing, like, a lot of guys, like, you know, players who want to be pro, 
they see the NBA and they see the glamour. So, but what if you don't make it to the 450 players roster mm-hmm. spots that they have? Right. What you gonna do? You could, there is something you can do. You know, you can yeah. go overseas and make millions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Guys are making seven figures. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. It just depends on what people want to do. Are they willing to go? Are they not? You know what I mean? But it ain't always sexy how you start. Like for me, it wasn't. Because my TCU career didn't really help me. Mm. But I still wanted to be a pro. Yeah. Like that was just what it was. Like I wanted to play basketball. I knew I had the talent. You know what I mean? I just needed to kind of prove it. But TCU didn't help, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. But it helped me get a good, good education. Um, my numbers weren't great. Uh, so I had to start off in the G League. When I got to the G League, they seen how athletic I was and stuff, but they wasn't wild by yeah. it, so they cut me. Damn. So my first, my first experience as a pro was being cut by the G League team. Damn! <laughs> like, like, like how humbling is that? Like, yeah. yo, so that like, was before it was the G League, right? That was when it was like the D League, like D League, right? I think it, it was either the D League. I can't even well, remember. It I think it might have been the like first year of the G League. The first year when it got the G League? Yeah. Damn. I think it might have been the first, the very first year. Damn. I can't remember, though, to be honest. I mean, I wasn't there that yeah, long, yeah. bro. Got there. Got <laughs> yeah. I got cut. Yeah. Like, listen, yeah. I got yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you know what's crazy? Like, I was, I feel like, so that, that moment changed my life and changed my perspective in a whole nother way that I wish would have happened to me before I even went to TCU or happened to me in college, you know what I mean? Or even high school. Like that defeat as mm-hmm. a person because it changed me as like a person to be like, all right, I know what I want. I know what I want to do. I don't care what people, how people think about it, but now I just need to execute and attack it. So what I did was, okay, I got cut. I was soaking for about, I don't know, some months. Mm-hmm. I mean, I got cut yeah. in October and in January I was bartending. Dang. Trying to feed, you know, feed your family, yeah. <laughs> provide them. And then I know you're the bar. Yo, you so much. So what you doing here? So that that don't. Have some right. people walk up yeah. on you. Like, Too tall. <laughs> yeah, <I'm here. laughs> Yo, why you not in the league? Like so, man. You know, meanwhile, I'm in Lifetime, averaging fifty in the men. Bored as hell. <laughs> Getting buckets. <laughs> in the church regular, averaging fifty. They were like, "Yo, you gotta go somewhere and play." So, man, I finally got an agent, man. And uh, he found me a gig, but it wasn't sexy, bro. I was yeah. probably making like $500 a month, trying to feed a family. And, uh, um, you know, in Australia. Australia about to ask what the first so that was, my, that was my first country. But the cool thing is Australia, I wasn't even able to bring my family. It was kind of tough. And my son was six months. Damn, just so a little It was like, bro's such a, such a mental, oh my God. It was tough. And I was there six months, so I went out there completely destroyed it but I knew that I had to make some sacrifices do some things to kind of like put myself in a position that I wanted to be in. so I went out there I went crazy average, like, and get your son you mad everybody get buckets average man. 24 points yeah, everybody get just, going, just, just, yeah. just going just crazy mad. but the yeah. thing is just took like the second division league so um, it wasn't yeah. it was like almost semi pro yeah. so it wasn't even nothing like it was just a step yeah it get, the, yeah. get me in that's all it was yeah. so went there then the next year the next year was a lot better for me because I was able to bring my family mm-hmm. out. The team flew me and my family out. And uh, it was uh, first division Japan. Mm-hmm. So now I'm in Japan for 10 months. This is like typically what it's like now. So from here on out, it was like I go out overseas for 10 months, then I come home for two months. And that's typically what most pro guys do. Now you got some leagues that have like a six month league like Australia. Mm-hmm. But most leagues aren't six months. Most leagues are like 10 months, like the France, the Spain, the, like the European stuff, mm-hmm. like 10 months. And that's how Japan was too, was like 10 months. And then um, had a pretty good year there, killed it again, you know, but still had that same fire in me, you know what I mean? Because I'm still like, something just turned. I don't know. Like, I just was like, after feeling that first defeat, because really, bro, to be honest, before I got cut in the G League, if you want to think back, I never really faced true defeat in my like, mm-hmm. I was always on the best team in the city. Mm-hmm. I was on the number two team in the state in high school. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Everything was not, no adversity. I've yeah. never, what? Yeah. We lost, if we lost games because we just didn't want to, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, you didn't it was, play hard. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I was just, I never really, I've never been cut or been told, you're not good. You right. know what? You're right. not good enough. Right. And I think I needed that mm-hmm. just to put that fire on me, you know what I mean? And. Sometimes you gotta, sometimes, you know, you need these moments to look yourself in the mirror and that's just what it was for me. 
And you took it, you know, um, I think you took it a, a different step because some people get discouraged and don't do it. And also, I think, you know, you're a Christian, we're Christians. I think, could you, I think your faith helped too, right? Just being from that family, Christian base, because we all go through adversity, but I think it's good when you have a Christian background to kind of be like, I'm better than what, the, you know, this, this is a small thing to a giant. Cause, bro, listen, if it wasn't for the, the, the God, if it wasn't for the most high, bro, I don't know where I'll be. Because really, it started with him. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I didn't, you know, it started with him because in that in that moment, that was all I had to lean on. Mm-hmm. I didn't really necessarily have people. You know, mm-hmm. everyone was seeing me and seeing my dreams crumble. So it was kind of like people were like, kind of like wanting to be away from me yeah, at the like, time. Oh, you didn't, yeah, yeah, it was weird. Yeah, you like, know? oh, you I, didn't I, make it. Yeah, yeah. you know, and it, it kind of sucks that people react to you like that when you're in a down moment, but it's just normal. I don't know, it's human nature. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, but for me, I had you know I I had I feel like I have a spiritual connection with God. So for me, that's what I was leaning on prayer. I had this book. I had this book, you know, that was like break, breaking down scripture, and I was reading that book to help me because I wasn't really I could read the Bible, but mm-hmm. I would read it, and then I couldn't even understand what it was. Not gonna lie to you, I just recently figured out how to read some of that stuff. This book yeah. was, was it like, a, like grasping the word or something like that. Something like that. I, I couldn't yeah, even tell I you the name of it. The house. <laughs> but it's I, a I, book. I just went to uh, yeah. I did Christian ministry just this past year. Yeah. Because uh, I'm called to be a pastor. So mm-hmm. when when he was talking about. Uh, when you was in high school and you were sent over there by a ministry, it's just, it's like God worked his way all the way around. Like, he sent you over there to show you, hey, yeah. and you're young, so you're not thinking about things like that. Yeah. And then he, like, brought you back over there. Yeah. It's like he, he was kind of showing you something. And for you to even say that you put a lot of your, your faith and a lot of your trust to be in Australia like that, like, yeah. I don't know what I'd do if I can't see my kids. Like, I don't even want to leave the state if I can't see my kids. It so, was, like, that's a big step and a, and a lot of trust that you put in God, a lot of faith that you had in Him. Really Shout out to your wife, too, and your family, man. That, oh, that's man. a tough union. You know, women, you got to give them a shot, too. Like, no. you got to have that support system. You know, you got to have a true real one with you these days because you yeah. see how it is with these athletes and women uh-huh. and bad choices they make. But that's that's dope that y'all was protected and covered, you know, it was yeah. on the same accord because it could have went sour. It could have been a, another story. You know what I'm saying? The no, ones you we know see what they that. say, man. Behind every great man is a good woman. So, Facts. You know, Facts. Man, wifey's definitely been holding it down. Man, we've gone through a lot. Yeah. And honestly, we're about to celebrate our 10 year. Oh. Or, you know, I met her in college. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I, I, I know. <laughs> I, 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 we've, I been, that. Yeah. we've been married together since. So, but, uh, man, yeah, she's, she's held it down, bro. She's definitely held it down. Um, you know, now it's just. You know, yeah. We just we in the, I guess we kind of like in the routine and it's just man God has blessed us so much man for real I can't even lie to you and it's crazy you talk about the you know making it full circle yeah. so I think it all started when I went on the ministry group with, with, with those with those guys from Reach USA because I told so the guy one of the guy head guys is named Robbie man shouts out to Robbie Reach USA shouts out shouts out to you, shout out to you. watching shout out to but, you. man Robbie changed my life really because. I was always a Christian as a kid. You know, my mom did a good job trying to put me in church and stuff like that. But I don't know. I don't think it just clicked. Mm-hmm. But going on that ministry, leaving the country, allowing me to see some things, allowing me to like, but we were doing Bible studies every night, you know what I mean, as men, you know what I mean, just sitting in the kumbaya like this, mm-hmm. you know, doing Bible studies. Every, you know, we were there two weeks together, so mm-hmm. 14, 14 different Bible studies, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it was just, it was great for me spiritually, but I still had, you know, obviously moved to grow. Yeah. But um, he definitely changed my life. And when it came to like going overseas and just, you know, when when my real rough moment did hit, I don't think I would have been prepared if I didn't go with him. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. On that, on that trip and had that. It was almost like God put that all together just to make sure, hey, yeah, you got steps ahead, but you got to do these first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Looking, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, man, I went through that. That helped me. You know what I mean? Like, and you don't notice it. Yeah. yeah. You go through it and you're like, wait. That's why. Oh, I see what you did. Yeah. <laughs> you, but we be questioning, why you got to do all that? Just yeah. that point. That's what's dope about it. Like, the adversity the builds character and faith builds character. And uh, yeah. it's funny you said at the time of that. So, you overseas, you balling. You know, I'm still watching you. I hit you. I remember I hit you up. 
I hit you up on Instagram, started to see some shoes. You're like, yo, I'm in China. It ain't even worth it. And I made the shoes. You're like, yo, it's not even worth it. But I'm still watching you. You know, Instagram, I'm, I'm watching you when I can. Then you get a call back to the league, right? Uh, to the Pelicans. Yeah. The Pelicans. Get a call back for them. I'm super geeked. Oh, by the way, I'm 2K. I edited it you. Put you in there because I was nice at 2K, so that was geek. And then, you know what I'm saying? After that comes, you go back overseas, ball, and now you in the big three, you know. And big three NBA, he's still available. This man league him, all right? He is a bucket. And I also want to say, this is a sidebar. Don't play with pros. He used to play with pick up with them. Pros is different. He used to play pick up with them. They don't miss shots when they warm up. Like, they hit everything. You're not a pro until you see players. We'll talk a little bit. It's like, oh, okay. I see what I got to do to this dude. Shut him up. <laughs> we, used to, we used to run in like like a TCU and I'll play with him and like you'll see somebody talk to him and like you know how you think somebody's sorry in the league or whatever. I just seen Garland and I just hit threes like NBA threes just what the hell? For no reason. <laughs> Literally just like what the hell? So overseas as well I got a question. So I heard that you just won some dunk contests as well. Yeah. One or two? two yeah, two. One what, of, uh, what was that? One in Germany that was my first one. Well, you know, it's crazy. That one was like, it was like a big deal in Europe. I mean, it, I mean, shoot, it kind of. So Shaq caught wind of what I did. I dunked him on. Oh, oh, I see like that. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Oh yeah, I'm that's right. why. That's see, what I was it. looking it up. I was looking you up, and I was, I see all these dunks. I'm seeing your highlights. I'm like, man, he nice. Why is he not in the NBA? And then I see Shaq to the floor. I'm like, oh, that's probably why. Cause Shaq. But I never watched nah, it. You know what's crazy? <laughs> You know what is crazy, y'all? I'm gonna tell y'all something that's so crazy, and this goes to test. This goes to show you like my journey has been like such a world. Mm. So like that moment pretty much killed my career, Damn. and I was like on a high. <laughs> but it, it Come was on, Shaq. no, no, no. I mean, shoot, he almost killed Javale McGee career too. So. Nah, nah. I mean, <laughs> it didn't kill my career. So yeah, he's here. At the end of the day, nah, that's why. Yeah. That's why he him. He him. Like. But uh, so I was doing well in Germany. I was killing it, doing well, a little, a little bit younger. So um, doing well, doing well, this game comes along. And this is like a game that we needed to win to kind of push us in playoffs. Mm-hmm. And me, I just left Japan. So I told you what happened. You know, y'all heard the steps. Yeah. Bartending yeah. to Australia, <laughs> to Japan. I killed Japan. And then I, I basically uh, signed with a new agent. And uh, my agent was like, yo, I'm going to put you in one of the best leagues in Europe. Put you in Germany. So I go to Germany. Basically, guys go to Germany and can go to the league. As a matter of fact, I've seen many people do it. Mm-hmm. I'm killing this league, destroying this league. I'm literally going crazy. My team were kind of like borderline, like, because it's crazy. It's 18 teams in a league. And so you can have like a team, like, so eight teams make playoffs mm-hmm. out of 18, right? Mm-hmm. But from like, Nine all the way down to like seventeen or let's say sixteen teams have the same record. Like the West Coast, it's a dog fight. Yeah. It's a dog fight. Mm-hmm. So you one game can make you make ninth the, place, yeah. eighth place, or fifteen. Damn. You know what I mean? And that's where we were at in that moment, and we were getting crushed in that crunch time, and mm-hmm. we needed to win this game. Also, in short, I made a bonehead play because out of frustration. And I heard a coach basically was like, Mr. Free Throw, Mr. Free Throw. And I heard him say, Mr. Free Throw. So oh. I'm going like, to go up there and make yeah. it. So people were like, what is he thinking? He, he, what were you? I actually meant to do that. Mm. Only because I was mad and I was yeah. like, we were losing the game. Yeah. And I just made a ball and play. And it happened to give us an extra possession. Mm. Like we still could have won. Right. Yeah. So then you got people who were like, yo, this guy's a fucking I wasn't thinking. I I ain't going away now. I'm not finna go that far. But out of just like, I wanted to win that game so bad, and I hear this coach talking about Miss Free Throw, Miss Free Throw, and just pure frustration. Yeah. Yeah. Integrity of the game. Like, I'm trying to win. You're trying to blow it. You blew me. So that makes sense. uh, I'm sorry. Germany, and what was the other uh, country you wanted? Dunk contest at the second year. Romania. Romania. Yeah. My bad. But that the point I was trying to say about that is so that happened and once that happened, uh, they put me in a dunk contest. So oh, once I dunked them on who they put me in a dunk contest, they were like, we, Man, you wanna do you wanna reenact the you wanna reenact the play? And I was like, Nah. Nah, but I'll do the dunk <laughs> but contest. I dunked, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. So I kinda like I did that and they were like, Man, please come on, do it again. I'm like, that's stupid. But they were so like the Germans were like the, the people in the league were so excited. They were like, yo, because they ain't never had that. It went viral. Yeah. yeah. Like, that was the probably the most viewed video they had that whole season. So they were like, yo, this is crazy. Like, 
do it again. Come on, we're going. It's, it's kind of like, you know, when uh, you ever hear somebody say, like, uh, God will use the negative and the positive. It's like, literally, that's what happened. Like, 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 Little yeah, did they know right, I actually yeah. had cool dunks that I could do. Little did they know yeah. you cooked, boy. And yeah. it helped, like you said, it, it went viral, but right. it actually helped your name get out there. And then now you're in a dunk contest. Right. And so it's like, it, it's it's like it basically helped you mm. more than it, than it even, I don't think it hurt you. Yeah, no, I did though. So the next yeah. season, the reason why I said it hurt me is because my agent on the phone, and he was trying to get, he, like, we had some big name European teams interested. And uh, no crickets. Wow. Yeah, just, just for that one. Just for that one. Yeah, perception. The so, perception of. Of everything. Yeah. Yes. Not knowing all Maybe I don't have my head on straight. Yeah. Maybe I don't. You know what I mean? Literally perception. thinking all that. So I went from there, and then I had to kind of build myself back up. But I did. And I, and, I, and through the grace of God, like, it was fairly quickly. Like, I went. So the next year I went to Belgium. Had a, well, the next year I came back to the same team. Things didn't work out. I didn't play nowhere near the way I played. Mm -hmm. And I left. got cut pretty much. Mm -hmm. It was mutual. Yeah. Like, like we, we out. Yeah. yeah. They didn't play me, and I didn't want to play. Yeah. And then I went to uh, I went to Belgium, found a, a, just a cool team. It ended up playing with uh, a guy named Trey Dempsey, whose dad happens to be the GM of the New Orleans Pelicans. Well, look at God. And so the first year I'm playing, and Trey Trey is going crazy. Yeah. But shout out to Trey if you watch. Trey Dempsey. Uh, Fuck it. He's going crazy. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the gym every day just. I even go, yeah, Trey, come on. Mm -hmm. Gotta go for 30 tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was going crazy, going for 30 the next day, next night, and uh, the season was over. And we did like, so when I came to the team, they were like, yo, we just don't want to be the last team in the league. By the time we were done, we were like, fight, we were almost in the playoffs. Yeah. We barely missed playoffs. Yeah. And so the next year, basically, like, all right, we want to resign. We definitely want to resign our star, Trey Dems. And uh, and whoever else he wants to play with, Dang. Trey's calling me immediately. Come please, on, please come, come on. on, come on, come on. So I, think so I was like, of course. I did a job. I, he did, little did he yeah. know, no one wanted to mess with yeah. me because of my dunk, yeah. Yeah. the hoop thing. Yeah. So I was like, I'm coming, yeah. coming right back. Yeah. And then the next year, man, it was I just had a breakout year, really killed it. And it happened that his dad was watching. It was crazy how that happened. His dad, um, uh. Basically, I was doing really good, doing really well, and uh, one of my assistant coaches was like, yo, um, you know, what, what do you think about doing summer league? Something like that. I was like, how am I doing summer league? I don't, yeah. I, I don't even know how to. Yeah. He's like, ask your brother. I was like, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, things can happen like that, mm. but I ain't really want to go through my brother. Yeah, you've you know, always yeah. been that way. Even when I met you, you never was one of them. Yeah. That, Right. Like, I respect you for that. Like, you never, because I met you, never want to be right. You always, like, I'm going to get out the mud myself. Yeah. And that's dope, because you could be that guy. We've seen those people. Yeah. And you play with them, and they ain't, they ain't, they ain't that. Yeah. I, th I think when he said that, I think he was kind of surprised. I was like, nah. Yeah. I, I don't, and my, it was crazy. My brother would be trying, like, hey, man, come on, man. Do something with the Rockets. Do something. By the time he was really, like, telling me to do something with the Rockets, it was the Pelicans were yeah. already, yeah. you know, I was already doing the thing with the Pelicans. But, um, so, but basically, he was like, man, you should reach out to your brother and see if there's even, you know, interest in mm -hmm. them doing it. And I was like, all right, cool. So I just kind of thought, we just kind of all just thought of the idea of, uh, you know, seeing if, uh, so what I thought of was hitting up Trey, mm -hmm. see if, like, hey, Trey, see if there's some interest in the mm -hmm. NBA that, it was just, it was yeah. BS. Mm -hmm. there was, I was just yeah. testing the yeah. nets. Throwing right? a little dart out there, see yeah. if catch, yeah. And uh, so we're in the locker room, and I'm like, hey, Trey, you, know, you think there's any interest that some GMs maybe you want to bring me in for summer league? Just trying to start the fire. And he gets up, you know, kind of like nervous and all, and just like, I ain't want to tell you this, man. My dad's been thinking about bringing in the you know, Pelican uh, summer league. Bro, I was like, no effing way, bro. This is the middle of the year. Yeah. So I was like, yo, that's crazy. That's crazy. And that's basically when I found out. Damn. And I remember watching the summer league too. And I was like, "Damn, get my boy on that." That was just so. I was so happy for you because it's something to see somebody like you. All got people you root for, but when you know somebody like you know them, and you, I know your story, man. It was like it was like seeing the Jordan Lebron. I was like, "That's my boy." Like I watched the summer league. Like I muted the thing. Like oh, garlic go off. So I was. It was so dope to see somebody you know to deserve it. Like you know, and it's not over. They're gonna call you back. Somebody gonna call you back because there's some people just getting buckets. 
I need to call up, I need to be in the league. His name is Garland Green, by the way. Sure. Uh, no pun intended. You don't know how you know. It did, it did. <laughs> Off topic, man, I got a question. I don't know, I think it's true, but your brother, so we on the top of the drill. Now, when y'all were little, he had lost his finger? Yeah. Or something like that? Like, <laughs> were, you, were you there when it happened? Yeah. Okay, I was there. I was, shoot. It was me and him. Uh, like I said, we was always doing everything together. And, uh, Okay, okay, imagine, okay, obviously our door wasn't this tall. But right. you know, you see how the door is. Yeah, that big yeah, door. They can't see, but it's a wide door. Right, 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 right. But you know, like at the top of the the top of the door, um, so we had like a hallway, and you go in this hallway, and there's like a door. But we took the, not the door, what do you call this? What do you going to call this? The frame? The little frame. The top, the top of the frame. frame. Yeah, top of the frame. frame. We had this uh, boxing bag hanging from the frame that we used to, my dad or whatever, bought us just, I don't know. Mm -hmm training box. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We were kids though. Mm -hmm. And uh, my brother had a ring. My mother, he used to always wear my mom's ring mm -hmm. on one of his fingers. So mm -hmm. my dad used to walk around wearing rings. Mm -hmm. We trying to be like my dad yeah. wearing rings. Yeah. And uh, uh, the bag, we took the bag off. I mm -hmm. guess we hit, we didn't hit the thing off the bag. So mm -hmm. the nail is stuff still up there that's hanging from the bag. Mm -hmm. And so what we used to do was, we used to always work on our hops back then. Yeah. We up there, hey man, can you touch this? And he's, you know, being a big brother, you can't touch all the high, you So he go up there, he touches it. Then I go up there, I touch I miss, you know, barely yeah. miss. And he's like, right, I'm going to show you. So he goes up there really high. I mean, I'm talking about he jumps really high. I was like, what you doing? And touches <laughs> it and hits the nail, and his finger gets caught in the nail. And as he, as he came down, uh, it was crazy. He's tough as nails. So, you know, most kids, I would have cried. I would have came down. What the hell? I would have came down yeah. screaming. Man, this dude came down and was just like, yo. It was looking, I was looking, and all I seen was just bone. It was like no skin. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, basically, you know, he lost his finger yeah. in the operation room and stuff like that. But, uh, so it's true. But nobody really talked about that. It's just crazy. Like, yeah. He told me. But to be honest, about. man, like, I, I, be, I be telling him all the time, like, bro, because my brother is a lights out. He's one of the best shooters I've ever been. I've been around some good shooters. No, none of them. None of them. Yeah, that's none of them. Yeah, that's that's a shooting hand, too? None of them. That's a shooting hand, too. He can, no, it's just something about, right like, how he there. shoots. Like, you know, they teach you you're supposed to shoot with your three fingers. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because, you know, I think with his finger or something, he shoots like that naturally. So it's like he has the purest, most beautiful shot. and everything. Oh, my God. It's perfect. I'm like, I be trying to study him. How you shoot it? How you hold it? You hold it like that? <laughs> Don't need a big buffy. Dude. <laughs> and, and since we are sneakers, this is a question I got to ask, man. Like, how was it? In high school, your brother got his own sneaker, and you win. Your brother got a shoe deal, and you got a sneaker that's your brother's. And you probably got colorways that nobody got, because I know you got some stuff. But how was it going to school, whatever grade you was? Like, this is my brother's shoe. I got him. You ain't going to have these. And my, like, how was that? <laughs> I ain't going to lie. If you get a shoe deal, I get a shoe. Like, yeah, these the garlands. You ain't got these. The colorways never coming out. I'll let you know when they come out. Like, how was that? That was it was. I ain't gonna lie, that was pretty dope. Seeing the seeing the shoes, cause he did it. You know, he won the dunk contest yeah. for, the, for the Celtics. Yeah. And uh, in Vegas, the candle. That, 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 no, that, the no, candle. That, the candle was the other one. He actually lost. He the lost the candle. He lost. He lost the candle. That was one of the most iconic dunk contests, and people like. That's when he lost, and he was to actually Dwight supposed Howard. to win. Yeah, Dwight yeah. Howard. Oh, he threw the ball in the way. That's when Dwight the Howard yeah. threw it. Yeah. Yeah. Dwight you really did his thing. He put on a show, but Drew, I don't know. He really dunked it though. Yeah, he played volleyball. Yeah, he didn't really dunk it. That's the only thing I didn't like. Dwight was just like he throwing just the ball in yeah. almost every dunk. But, you know, again, I thought it was a really good dunk contest. After that one, it was dead until uh, Levine and Levine and Gore came in. Yeah. Levine and Gore. Because that one, I, that, I don't know who won it. That was, I think Gore should have won with the little. Yeah. I, feel, I feel sorry for uh, Gore. What's his name? Yeah, Aaron Gore. Gore, he should have won. Yeah. But you know Three what? Three times he lost every single time. He been humble. One of those he should have won though. The I don't one know he did the one with Levine though. He did three. some with the two hands. It was, it was crazy. He definitely should have won the last one. The last one, I think that's the one. Yeah, he made a he made a he made a he did way made a a mistake. He made an eight and a half or something. Yeah, he made a song. Yeah, he made a song. He made a song with him. We talking about the thing. Yeah, Gordon. No, Gordon made a song talking about D Way. Like he gave him an eight. Yeah, it's a song. Yes, D Wade, man, you you fired for that job. <laughs> Appreciate you for the rings of Miami and the Brown and the Oh, 
But you being humble, this man got hops too, man. Like garlic, garlic is bouncy. For, he, uh, the big three, he's dunking on people's heads. I just seen him. I just seen in college games where he jumped and the other team like in TCU, he was in the Mile West and you play teams twice a year, a year, whatever it may be. I would see Garland drive and you would see everybody just look like. Yeah, it's effortless. No, they look like they don't when jump. He, when he dunk, it's effortless. No, but I'm like, saying, you know how like when Zion would dunk in high school, the kids like, I ain't getting that. I would see Garland go to the rim. You just see everybody like, yeah, this fat, Peace let's out. go back. <laughs> hey, this dude, so he humble, man. He bouncy, but he got all around game like that. Bro. So I appreciate that. Um, with the big three, I know you work with uh, Jay Rich too. Y'all had like y'all get on the court together. At all. Is he on the court? Man, so it's crazy how that happened. I was with them. I'm with. I'm on my brother's team now. Oh, oh so, man, the whole the play. whole point just of me happened. even playing this was uh was to be on my brother's team. And uh, in order to happen, I had to get in the draft pool to be drafted. Right. They have like a draft, mm -hmm. and um, it's crazy. So my brother. As of his first pick, he's a cap. He's a captain. So the captains are the ones. They're like the GMs. They pick. Yeah. And so it was crazy. It was like drama. On that. Yeah. <laughs> Why he gonna pick round, his brother? <laughs> the first round, every, everyone yeah. was thinking that yeah. he didn't pick me first round. He picks up a big man. And we talked about. This. Okay. 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 We I'm talked look, about. Uh, this. No, we talked okay. about this. I'm looking because sure. he was like, man, yeah. I want to pick up this big. I think we need a big. I know I'm gonna get you. He was like, a bunch of NBA guys. Maybe they don't know about overseas. Maybe they're not gonna recognize you, and, oh, and then and then we're gonna be Gucci second round pick you yeah. up. That's, and I was like, Joe, maybe you're right. Maybe you're wrong. But draft <laughs> pick. So I was like, all right, do, do what you gotta do. You know, I'm trying to win too. So he picked Jeff Aries. Big man doing great for us. Shout, Shout out, out to Jeff. you, Jeff Aries. Shout out so, to you. And um, so then the, the second round comes, and Tri State picks me before Joe picks. Drove got a chance wow. to fix. Oh, 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 bro. <laughs> I, I, bro. I honestly wasn't going to do it. Yeah, this was just a relax with no, your no, brother. No, 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 no. I was, I was like, yo, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to just chill, yeah. go to vacation. Yeah. I'm going to Cabo. Or yeah, I got two yeah. months to relax. <laughs> I got yeah, two months. Yeah. And he was like, nah, man. You know, you know, you're still a pro. You might as well, you know, make some money, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, all right, I'll try it. And then so the first week, you know, I played with Tri State. It was cool, you know. Yeah. Man, it was man. My coach was Julius Irving. Dr. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Bro, I'm going, bro. I'm looking at him like, like, like yo, I'm like Dr. J come right on, now. Man. Yo, he be running drills. <laughs> 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 no, 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 he's really still ready. cool. He's still cool on the other side of the pillow. Dr. Cool, cool, J. Man. Really, like, first day I got there, he showed me a move, and I'm like, I've been using it ever since. Come on, Dr. Come on, Dr. Young fella, come on. So it's really, man, the whole Big Three experience has been really cool. But, uh, you know, I really wanted to play with my brother. So we were able to kind of, Jay Rich, you know, he was the, the captain of my team, and we were able to work out a deal where basically they dropped me just for my brother to pick me up, and they picked up another player. So it's kind of like a trade swap drop, I don't know yeah. what you want to call it. But it worked out, and now, you know, I'm on my brother's team. They were losing games, but we've been winning, so, you know, it's all, it's all love. Shouts out to UJ Rich. Shouts out to <laughs> Gerald for making it happen. And uh, the same thing, like a try Trying to get turn. another dub de de tomorrow. Yeah, you got, we gonna, we gonna, we going to pull up on you. We're going to pull up on you. We're going to be there. I'm fine. I'm going to tell you to work out here, but I'm, I'm going to pull up to the game for sure. Okay. Uh, also, uh, you have so much you're talking me about that. Oh, I'm sorry. After. I'm, yeah, after this, we got you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Well, I got, I got, I got, well, I kind of asked you one, and he kind of hit the topic about juggling overseas and family and faith. We kind of talked about that. Um, I was going to ask you about your book because I've seen it, and he ain't know about I'm it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to capture the camera. Probably, I didn't even know what I'm supposed to, to be. Is, are you really his I friend? Some, I got to do some better marketing. Yeah, I didn't know. I would have bought it. I didn't I know. Some better I don't have no billion no, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I'm sorry. I didn't know. He told me. I'm like, going to your book, though. I will send you. Appreciate that. Oh, yes, yeah, okay. Hey, but I ain't gonna lie, he showed up like that. Like he reads. Hey, go to Audio cross, crossing borders. Hey, crossing borders. Uh, uh, by Garland Green on Amazon. Go check it out. Crossing, crossing borders. borders. By Garland Green on Amazon. It's gonna be like at the bottom of this. But I didn't Man, even really know. The book though was crazy. Like I didn't even, I didn't even know I would do something like that. My wife was like, "Yo, why don't you write a book?" I was like, "Why?" She was like, "Yo, like you, it'd be dope for you. Like, you know, you have like." You know, such an experience, like, you've been everywhere. You know, she's seen my ups and downs. Mm -hmm. you know? She's like, you know, she's like, yo, you sit up here and, you know, you're motivating everyone you meet. Like, why don't you just write a book and, like, just put it all on, you know, paper? And, uh, man, it was a good experience, bro. Like, 
really. I've, I've worked with a lot of people, man, and uh, it was just really dope doing that book. So, so. Doing the podcast, we got a Cross the Borders podcast too. Y'all ain't the only ones. Okay. Hey, we didn't know. Y'all ain't the only look, ones. Look, cross exactly. the borders. That's your plug. Hey, plug hey. away. Hey, go ahead and hey, look. Every time you got an episode, we're going to reshare, repost yes, it. That's yes, what it's about. Yes. It's about giving people like it so the flowers ahead of time because yeah, it's a lot of right. underdogs, a lot of people that's, that's really in the trenches that y'all don't appreciate it. So we live in the world now, it's about the fast the fast money. Like, yeah. oh, look at this D1 prospect. Look at this NBA. I like the people, the people that's been through something because those are people that's got longevity and they got, they, got, they, got, they got humbleness. Like you said, you got humble from defeat. You didn't let it lose you, but... I think we, everybody want quick ready results. Nobody want to grind anymore. Everybody want like, oh, I'm going to do. Oh, I'm going to the NBA. They don't want. I got cut. I went to D2. I went overseas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want that anymore. Everybody want instant, yeah. instant meal. So that's what I love about it. It's dope that, you know what I'm saying, you still go. Man, the, uh, the, man the, the book, though, man, when I, uh, when I first started writing it, it was, it was, a, it was a lot. Oh, you good. You good. I'm talking yeah. about that camera. <laughs> the camera running up. You good, you good, go ahead. When uh, when we first started writing it, it was it was mainly like really even now, like the book real the true purpose of the book is just to like and the podcast is to give people, you know, to start people to talk about things because really the overseas market is just so wild wild west. Like the NBA is great. You know, they got the players union that protects the players. You got, you know, the NBA Players Association. They're Ooh. pretty much it's like a union that yeah, protects protect the players, players. yeah. Overseas is not, you know, you got guys not getting paid, you got guys, you know, getting paid late, you got guys signing for something and then receiving something way less, you know what I mean? But there's, there's things that you can do to navigate these things, and that's what I pretty much was the book is about for you. People going into it, people who will go into it, and just give them a guide, because, like, you know, when I first came out, I didn't have nothing. You know, even my brother, like, my brother was a pro, and he played overseas, but there's only so much he knew. And just me just writing a book, I don't even, I just want people to spark conversation about certain topics. We talk about mental, uh, mental health. That's very Isolation. Because, yeah, like, the biggest thing about being overseas so far away from everybody you know is, like, the mental. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Sometimes you kind of, like, Mike, like this guy named Mike James, he's a big-time player overseas. He said something like, the craziest thing about being overseas is you get so used to not being around people. Like, I'm an introvert. Yeah, mm-hmm. like. And that's that's the truth. Like even with my family, like, even us, like we're used to us, mm-hmm. but that's like yeah, that's like, same immediate. Like even yeah. now, like my kids, they're around their cousins so over the summer, and sometimes like they be like in the middle of the day shutting down. You know, <laughs> like yo, I <laughs> had enough for you today. Yeah. This barbecue <laughs> getting on my nerves. How to go? You know, just sparking that conversation to talk about these like topics. You know, to so we can all the people who are in this can grow, and it's not just them, anyone. You know, every when you pick up the book, you're gonna to relate to something, and that's what I notice about like life. Like just sharing your story, can you be surprised who that relates to? You know yeah. what I mean? So that's why. I'm a, I'm a send me the link. I'm a buy it. You got an autograph for me. You got it. Okay, we'll send me the link. I care more. This guy, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm not starting gonna, to convince yeah. you. No, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. He told me like, I'm like he didn't write no he book. Said, he said he didn't write no book. I'm like, nah, this him. This him. I, was like, I clicked on it and, and then I, your picture came. Out. I said, yeah, I like, that's oh, him. I was like, oh shit. Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't even know. Bro. I got a marketing book. Yeah. See, that's not my fault. I, I didn't know. Like, it is my fault. I should have known. You're his I'm actual actually, friend, and you didn't know. Actually, I got another project. What? I'm a supporter and purchase. I don't do the the fake support with that and. uh I, I touched on what I had to touch on. You got anything you want to touch on? I mean, what's your favorite basketball movie of all time? Yes, movie? yes, yes. Yeah, hoop movie, hoop movie. Man, probably Space Jam. One, right? The weirdest one, way. One, right? Yes. Okay. What? Just make it sure. No, 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 make it sure. No, 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 just make it sure. I'm not coming to the Because he's a healer. I'm saying that. I'm talking to the kid. I knew it was one. I actually thought good. the new Space Jam was pretty cool. Well, at least it was for so kids. For kids. My kids loved it. My son yeah. loved it. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah, he was talking about crossover <laughs> step back. I didn't love it. Uh, I just said that. No, it was all right. It was cool. I actually uh, liked it. MJ is a goat. It's it's just. And, and it's Jordan. Jordan's a goat. I'm not going to go there. We're not going to go there. Yo, <laughs> side boy, yo, bro. My boy, he used to cheat with your brother. We used to play 2K. He used to cheat. Everyone talks oh, about this. Your brother was a 2K14. Your oh, brother was a cheat code, bro. <laughs> your brother was a cheat code. Bro, Gerald, you was a cheat code. Bro, I've been trying to tell him. Because, because you can be do like, that. bro, I used to go for 
50. Because you can do them Easy. spin dunks. Them G spin dunks. All you gotta do is shoot day. threes. Yo. Oh, bro. Especially the point. I remember 2K, I was nice. Yo, this was the only, like, y'all wanna know who could beat me? It was him. Me and him would battle. So, this is my <laughs> brother from another. He picked Gerald, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna leave him open for a three, right? You know how he's playing, man. I look up, he hit five threes. Then I go up, he dunk. I'm like, how do you have 65 points with somebody that I'm like, he has 65, and I couldn't stop him, bro. So, Gerald Green on 2K14, I don't know what they did, bro. Speaking of 2K, speaking of 2K, man, we be twitching, me and my brother. Game, Green, game, we do know about that. G Flight, G Flight 650 uh, on Twitch, so check us out. We be on pretty much Monday through Friday, so check us out. And his brother's a cheat code on that, bro. Yeah. I just man, that, we be we be playing. I seen your brother was on that. Heard, uh, he was on uh, YouTube. Somebody was playing with him. He was nice. Yeah. Uh, no, they tried to clown on one on one thing. Yeah, I seen no, it. But they, that man, that dude, he's capping. He's capping. My brother had like one bad game, and then he was just. Well, you know, like, you know how it is. Most of the time, like my son played two K. Like they be talking crazy to my son. He ten. He be having like 10, 15. You a trash. You a bump. He's ten. Like, well, no, it's cool. I like I, I like it. Like it gives us an opportunity to like interact with fans. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that's why I do it. You know, fans are always hit me up on Instagram. Hey, can you do this? Can you do that? Well, hey, man, just join my Twitch. Yeah. Get in on a conversation, Strange. and we yeah. just yeah. we chop it up. Yeah. We chop it up for like an hour. I play for an hour, and then we're out. You know? yeah. so, Who you use your team? Right huh? now. Who's your team right now? Oh, man, I'm playing with the player, like a my player. I'm up on the yeah, yeah, the, the garland yeah. green like store. We'll happen. play like in the park. Yeah, you know? yeah. we just yeah. and then you'll have like people come in, chop it up, or play with us. We even play with some of the fans. Some of the fans jump in and play against us. See, he old school. I try to get him to do my play with me. Yeah. He just play versus, yeah. but he don't join yeah. rec with me. Yeah. It's, a, it's a new wave. It's he like won't a metaverse, do it. bro. Yo, he <laughs> won't do it. It's like a metaverse. Real versus. Josh will play Rick with me. I got to do it, but this hey, once guy. You like it, once you do it, though, you're going to be hooked. Rich. You're going to be hooked. Because you're, you're, you're trying to fit not hooked. That's what but the dog. kids do. Don't nah, do that. Yeah, that's, that's what the kids do. Yeah. Hey, mama, can I use a credit card? Yeah. Don't, don't do that. that. Just give, just hoop. Well, if you stop driving around and them to say that you won't spend that, that See, much you know, gas. Man. Man. Yeah. You the coke, but. Go back to the other podcast. You see how much he spent on gas. I calculated the gas going down a little bit. Stop it, please. Don't go down the street to the corner. He bought little sneakers too. Yeah, wasting money. That could have been VC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <My VC. laughs> hey, Wallace. So I got one more thing. What's your favorite sneaker to hoop in? Like it ain't even gotta be like comfort. Like I know, sir, we're gonna get to that too. This is gonna be the last thing. Slide them over here, D. Uh what's your favorite sneaker? Like you put them on, like, okay, I'm getting buckets, I got bounce. What's your favorite sneaker? Like, you know, somebody Man. getting buckets and even I'm comfortable. It's crazy, it's like, it keeps changing every year for me. Um Right now, I'll probably say them Giannis. Oh. Like Giannis for some reason. Yeah, my son got a pair of them. Shots out to Uncle D, he got him a pair. Oh, yeah. Make good things about them comfortable. Yeah, that's yeah, what my son said. Yeah, I like them. And they low tops. Yeah. Yeah. Are they I more like comfortable them. than Kobe's? They remind me of the Kobe's in a way. Is that like maybe kind They're of almost like a modern Kobe or something. I don't I don't know. They feel completely different. I like the white ones. I like the last year I was in the Kyrie's. The one with the strap? No. The other, the newer ones. Yeah. Like the newer ones. The yeah. newer ones. With the hot top. Yeah, the, the newer ones are lower. Yeah, I just found out in Kyrie, uh, from where I see this at, that he got basically three types of shoes. Like, to ball in, he got one game time shoes with one run in the game. Then he got some, like, ones that you can, like, play in the work or, like, practice. And then he got some ones that's just, like, walk around shoes. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that. I just thought it was going to be what you need. He brought to be more for more because he needs to back to the tire. So you got you got you said the Giannis is the best shooter hoop in. What we're gonna do real quick to end it is uh we call this either rock or hoop in, you know, you tell us a sneaker, if you hoop in them or rock them off the court. The first one is the easy ball runner, Josh. So I'm gonna go quick, dude. What you got? So that's yes on the easy way, bro. Shout out to my boy. I can't say his name, his name but I'm one of my guys. He, he can get stickers from me uh, personally or early. So it's his collection. It's so, next pair. No, 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 no. Next pair. If these are Tom Sachs, it's something calm. I feel like we're in the church with white feet. It's something calm, Tom Sachs, Nike, what are these called? Yeah, these real, these real, these real calm. What about you guys, bro? I get this. You know what? Um, I don't 
to keep those. See, I got the green ones and the gray ones. Don't look, don't look, that's kind of right. No, shout out to his plug, because uh, I'm going to need these. <laughs> He's going to be hitting you up. I got it. I'm going to look out for you, because uh, now I know it's sorry, but I'm going to choose 13. So I know it's a cop. This is just the wrong man. No questions. No questions. So, so we, we, uh, we didn't want up with sneakers. That's a cop. Ooh, allegedly. I hope he's gonna have He said himself he's gonna leave. I didn't know where that's going. Go back to Mike. He knows what I'm doing. I need a red eye token. Yeah, well, he didn't matter if he was to the. Same thing. Yeah, I'm gonna copy his stuff. So, yeah. so uh, we went through the, the life. We want to thank you for being our guest. Thank you for uh, letting us reach out to you, come up to you, support you with the big dream. Uh, no problem. And uh, yeah. we're gonna get the book. 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 And uh, get the book. I'm gonna purchase the book. Cross the borders. And the podcast and his Twitch. So we want you to shout out everything you got going on. Anytime you got something, we're gonna post it. We can share it. We like it. All the links will be down there. All the links will be at the bottom. Like, subscribe. Um, give me an Instagram where they can follow you at. Twitch, all that stuff. Instagram and my Twitch is GFlight16. And uh, like I said, we appreciate you for coming out. Uh, again, I've been knowing you for like, quite some time. You've been solid and changed up. I'm proud of you, your journey. I heard you say this like that. So I'm proud of your journey. Even little things, like even when you was trying to reach out to you, you just keep reaching back. That's important. You, know? uh, you deserve that you give me that help. You know what I'm saying? I got you. I'm going to be rooting for you. And tomorrow, he going to dunk on somebody's head like he did again. He was going to dunk on somebody's head the other night. Yeah, Watch that, man. No, that's this. That's this. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate it. That's behind the kicks. I'm crooked. Nice. And that's all the green. He's a bucket. That's him. 
had a knee left coat and it's behind the back. <laughs> 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 <laughs>